professor from the Thank you. <laughs> so then uh, today I just happened to have a chance to meet her. She retired a couple years ago and enjoy her life so much. But I'm appreciate she spent the time with me today. First of all, to introduce Lisa. I'm Miriam Fankhauser. I'm from Seneca County. I started teaching in high school for about 10 years. And I came to Tiffin University after my divorce when I couldn't get rehired in teaching in public education and wasn't sure I could teach college and found out I could and was damn good at it. <laughs> is the first person open her arm when I still knew in Tiffin that day when we both in main, main. main building main classroom maybe, building maybe I let you tell the story <laughs> well I came down the stairs and Fang Mei was at the bottom and, and I introduced myself I guess or something anyway we got to talking and she says where are you going I said I'm going to lunch and she says oh I said, come on and go with me. She said, I can't do that. I'm just a teacher. I said, uh, I'm just a teacher too. Come on and go with me. And she said, well, I don't know that I should. I said, yes, you should. And so I drug her along and took her to lunch with me. Yeah. And that was the beginning. Yeah. The reason I say I cannot go with her because she's a thin. Well, you know. <laughs> and then... In my culture, thin is such a high position. I don't feel I should eat with thin. But Marion said, hey, let's go. So I grabbed her head. And then that's the start of our friendship. Yes. So after that, you know, whenever I have trouble, when I feel depressed, when I don't know what to do, I went to her and say, one time I say, Remember, I don't know where my position in Tiffin. I remember that. You want to tell the story? Yes. <laughs> she says, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I, I like Tiffin, but I, I don't feel like I'm in it, like I'm contributing. And at that time, we had just started with um, Chinese students coming into the campus, and we were trying to help them adapt and help them feel more at home. And we had some that we were really having some trouble with, and it just dawned on me this was a perfect match for Fang Mei. And so I asked her about it. She said, oh, I'd love to do that. And in, in, in the process, then she became the, what we would call freshman advisor for those incoming Chinese students. And it was, a much, it was much easier because she could speak with them in Chinese, which I could not do but I could visit with her and she could visit with me and we made their transitions, I think, much easier. Also, a lot of students just like me also have that privilege to enjoy her hugging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever I, you know, pass her off, I say, can I have a hug? <laughs> I was the huggy person. Yeah. I was the touchy-feely faculty member. Yeah. I was the one who would cry in campus, yeah. uh, in, in classes. Yeah. And there were people who were very uncomfortable with that. Yeah. But I did not do that prior probably till I had grown enough to be comfortable with who I was. Yeah. Uh, when I had my divorce, I went through intensive counseling. I had lost many parts of me before I left my marriage. And I had to get those pieces back. And once I got those pieces back, I made up my mind I was not giving them up for anybody again. Mm. I laughed hard, yeah. I cried hard, yeah. I love people. Mm. In the process of going through the divorce, I said I'll never feel again. Mm. And I put walls up for three years. They were affecting my children, they were affecting my family, it was affecting my teaching, yeah. it was affecting my life. And I said, I can't live with this. Yeah. I'd rather be vulnerable. Yeah. And 
I love what I do. I love the people. I love my family. So I'm vulnerable and I cry and I laugh. <laughs> and that's what students need. They need a real teacher yes. from their heart. Yes. Right? So actually, also today, the reason I meet Marion because one of our former students, <laughs> David Guo, Sim Guo, he left here and went to San Francisco. And then when I meet him the other day, he asked me to bring the chocolate back to Marion. Because whatever she give to him love, now student want to give that. Let's go back to from very, very, very early time. When you got the idea you want to be a teacher? My grandmother. Yeah. My mother's mother. Yeah. Went into the classroom when she was 16 years old, into a one-room classroom. Yeah. She passed the Boxwell exam, went into teaching. Oh. And she taught all of her life, one way or another, yeah. till she died with cancer. And at that point, she was tutoring transient students. Yeah. She was my mentor and guide. Wow. Okay. And I remember mm -hmm. the very earliest memory I have of playing teacher. Yeah. I had to be about second or third grade. I, I wasn't very big. Yeah. And my mom and dad gave me a long flip top piano yeah. stool uh -huh. for my desk. Okay. And I was grading papers. Grading A's, papers. B's, for C's. For your playing, playing, grading papers. <laughs> I wasn't very old. Yeah. I knew I was going to be a teacher, teacher. <laughs> and teacher. it was really interesting because as I was growing from little girl up, yeah. I always had yeah. books yeah. and my baby dolls. Uh. I am a mother woman and I'm also an intellect. <laughs> um, and I, I couldn't read enough, I couldn't, I couldn't get enough knowledge. Grandmother always said, no education is ever a miss. Take everything you can get. Uh -huh. So when I got a little older and I knew I was going to go into teaching, mm -hmm. I asked my grandmother, I said, what makes a good teacher? Yeah. She said, insistence, yeah. persistence, oh. consistency. And she said, students will do exactly what you ask of them. They will do what you expect of them. Yeah. And so she said, you set the goal. Mm -hmm. And while I had a lot of students who didn't like me because I would push them, okay. I always operated on the premise they didn't know what they could do yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they needed to learn uh, what they could do. Yeah. And I needed to push them to do that. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise they just sit there and ride. Yeah. Because they just give up on themselves yeah. already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a family that did not lie. They did not like lying. Okay. I was taught to be honest. Yeah. And I perpetuated that in my classroom. So I did not tolerate cheating. Okay. And I worked very hard with every student. Yeah. Any student who wanted to learn. Yeah. And I probably found it far more difficult to work with people who were lazy and didn't want to do anything yeah. than people who could who struggled learning okay. but worked hard at it. Okay. Now, how long you been teaching? I started teaching in junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. When I got to my senior year in high school, I knew I was going to be a teacher. Yeah. I wasn't sure what I was going to teach yeah. because I was very good in music yeah. and I was fairly good in English. Yeah. I got scholarship in music. music and so I thought I'd be a music teacher. Yeah. Well, things in college were rocky and yeah. I really enjoyed my English classes, although they were much harder than my music classes were. Yeah. But my senior year in English in high school, okay. I had a teacher. Mm -hmm. She was a new one. Mm -hmm. She came in yeah. and she was far more interested in the guys than she was in teaching. And I made up my mind I could teach better than she could. Okay. And that started my process yeah. of getting a double major. I got a double major in English and a yeah. double major in, in, in music. Yeah. And my first jobs were teaching English. English. And I taught English in public education yeah. for um, from 1967 yeah. 
till 1972 when I had my first daughter. Okay. And then I quit teaching yeah. for five or six years till I got my two daughters reared. Wow. Be a mother, and then I get till I got them into school because yeah. I knew I could get them to school, I could teach, and we would be home again. Yeah, I always wanted to watch my girls grow up. Yeah, and so then I was in public school those four or five years, yeah. and then I went back to try to get back into public education. Mm -hmm. And because in that time I had gotten my master's degree, yeah. I couldn't get rehired. Um, so I did substitute teaching. Yeah. I did uh, music directorships. Mm -hmm. I did anything I could do. Yeah. When I finally, when my father finally died in 1981, oh. I began to work intensely yeah. in public education again, but it was mostly part time. Yeah. Finally, I ended up getting a divorce the year my father was killed. Yeah. I needed full-time work. Yeah. I needed it badly. Yeah. And um, we have a farm, and so I was I was working on the farm yeah. for about two years, oh. but just barely making bills. Wow. And finally, I walked through the Seneca County Fair. Yeah. And there was a TU booth. Oh. And I knew I couldn't get hired at Heidelberg because Heidelberg only would hire PhDs. Okay. I had a master's degree. Okay. I asked if they had any positions open for English. Yeah. Well, she was sure that we did. Okay. And so I inquired. Yeah. And I filled out an application and I came for an interview. And the really quirky thing was yeah. I walked into Sites. I came to the door at Sites yeah. and out the door yeah. came a woman I had worked for at Heidelberg College when I was in college. Oh. Pack the toe. Okay. And she says, Miriam, yeah. what are you doing here? Yeah. And I said, I'm looking for a job at Tiffin University. Yeah. Who are you interviewing with? Yeah. Dean Richardson. Yeah. You come right along. And she walked me up the steps and she introduced me to Dean Richardson oh. and she says, hire her. She's good. <laughs> and I said, Pat, you don't even know me. You haven't seen me since I was in college. Yeah. Yeah. She says, I know you. I work with you. That's, yeah. And I got hired part time. Okay. I worked part time at TU for three years, I think two or three years. Okay. And then an English position opened up, and Tim Rook was my department chair. Okay. And he said, I want you to apply. Yeah. I said, They're asking for a PhD. I don't have a PhD. Yeah. He said, I said, I won't get it. He yeah. said, I want you to apply. <laughs> we know you. Yeah. We know what you do. Yeah. And I was fired. Yeah. And while I had tried to get back into public education and couldn't, yeah. because I could have been paid more there, oh. I hired on at full time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this or not. Yeah. It took me about five years. Yeah to settle into the culture, yeah. to settle into being comfortable with my ability, to know that I could do it. Just like me. Yes, <laughs> I wonder, you just know. like you, Fang <laughs> Man. And I grew up here. Okay. I really grew up here. I, After my dad was killed, my dad used to say that his son was his son until he got him a wife. His daughter was his daughter for all of her life. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that wasn't right. Yeah. I was his daughter till he died. Then I had to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. And I grew up at Tiffin University. And if anybody would have told me in the 31 and a half years that I spent here yeah. that I would have ended up when I began, yeah. that I would have ended up yeah with the respect of my colleagues that I had. Yeah, and then you have been dean for several years. I was dean for three, for three and a half years, I think, yeah. three or three and a half years. Yeah. Um, I would have never dreamed all of those things would have taken right. place, ever, right. Right. not ever. And but it just unfolded. Yeah. Our life, when I was going through counseling, yeah. I was studying uh, C.G. Jung, and I was studying Joseph Campbell. And Joseph Campbell always said, Follow your bliss. 
open the doors where you know you need to go and go. And had I never gotten a divorce, I would have never entered college teaching. I knew I had to get the divorce, even though I knew they was wrong. I knew it was also right. And I got the divorce, and then the doors just began to unfold. And I walked in here not knowing if I could or not. Yeah. And then you changed people's lives. <laughs> I always changed people's lives, right. but here, I did it in a very different way than in yeah. high school teaching. Because so many came to us saying they yeah. damaged. Yeah. And they needed Mama to doll. learn yeah. who they were yeah. and how. And I could bring what I learned yeah. in counseling yeah. to them. Yeah, do your teaching. Yes. Do your advising. Yes. When I was learning here, in the first few years, we had a workshop in the fall and they asked us how we wanted our students at TU to remember us. Mm -hmm. I had to go back to Heidelberg yeah. to think how I remembered Heidelberg. Okay. Heidelberg gave me an excellent education. Mm -hmm. Taught me nothing about life. Yeah. Okay. But I don't think it applied things to life the way I thought my students needed that. So it dawned on me that I had to bring, when I when I went through my divorce, mm -hmm. I hit a wall. Yeah, right. But yeah, <laughs> and when dad died and I hit, and yeah. I hit my divorce all in six months, yeah. I hit a wall and I thought, I don't know if I can survive this. Yeah. I knew I wasn't suicidal. Yeah. I had a friend who was suicidal mm -hmm. and where we live, we live on, we live on my great grandfather's homestead. Yeah. And the Sandusky River comes this way, mm -hmm. and the road comes this way, mm -hmm. and we live here. Okay. And every time I came around that corner, yeah. there's a direct drop down to the river. And I'd look at that river and I'd say, okay. it'd be so easy, yeah. it'd be so easy to just, yeah. but you don't get me. Yeah. I will not do that, I yeah. will survive. Yeah. And I was in counseling. Yeah. The first thing Jim said was, yeah. I want you to regain your lives yeah. and control. Yeah. And I walked with him for about five years, steadily. Yeah. And he gave me my life back. Yeah. And, then, and then I knew what I needed to pass on to my students. Yeah. And because I knew, I knew that they would hit walls yeah. and they had to know they could do it. I am teaching them, I am sharing with them, yeah. and they may not be ready for some of the things I'm sharing right now, yeah, but it's there. They will. But it's there. Yeah. And when they hit the wall, yes, they remember. <laughs> they'll go, Fankhauser told me I could do this. Yeah, because she can do it. Because she did it. And so that's how I taught. So God give you a a good preparation oh. before you came into Tiffin. It was a journey. Yeah. It was life's journey. Yeah. And while I thought I went through hell and that was my Armageddon, yeah. I look around and I know there are a lot of people who go through much worse hell than I ever went through. Yeah. But that was the heroic journey. Yeah. We, However many times yeah. we go through those spaces where we're tried yeah. and where we have to figure out that we can do it yeah. and that we can come out on the other end, yeah. that's good, but we always have to bring what we have on the other end back right. to community, to other people. Yeah. Otherwise, our life means nothing. So you pay it forward. <laughs> that's why we all get blessing by having you. <laughs> <laughs> I was very blessed. My parents loved me very, very much. Yeah. I was not an abused child, and I know people used to tell me I spoiled my children, and I'd look at them and say, I didn't spoil my children, I loved my I children, loved because I know that out there in that world, yeah. it's cruel, yeah. and I want them to know that there is love in the world, because without love, you have nothing. And the same with teaching, 
Absolutely. Without loving, you cannot teach. You cannot teach. And I am convinced that while there are some very good education programs mm -hmm. and people learn the methods, etc. Yeah. If your heart and your soul is not in it, you may teach successfully, yeah. you but you're touch, not a great teacher. You don't touch their heart. Yeah. I had an administrator uh -huh. who looked at me and said um, he wanted me to do a particular job which would have taken me out of teaching. Yeah. I said, I'm not going to no. do it. No. <laughs> well, he went after me and he finally said, you need your name on something. I'm gonna have my name on three things. Yeah. One is the brick out there in that center courtyard. Oh. <laughs> One is my gravestone. Yeah. And my heart, my name's gonna be carved on the hearts of every one of my students. And, and he just looked at me. He didn't understand that. That time, hopefully he understood that. Fun is on that side, so oh. hopefully he does. <laughs> I'm never gonna be great. I'm just another person trying to do a job well. You, you will need to be there to walk with your student. And when you came to me, when, you, when I met you and you said you were not worthy to have lunch with me, yeah. I wanted you to understand I was just a person. Just a person with a position called dean at that time. <laughs> that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> I was a good dean too. Yeah. But I did that because I, I loved my people. Yeah. I loved the people I worked with. Yeah. Uh -huh. And while I had deans who believed they had lots of power, I knew I didn't have power. You have power. But I had, <laughs> I had the ability yeah. to promote, yeah. to protect, yeah. to work with colleagues and yeah. students to make the best programs yeah. we could make, yeah. to cushion from the people who Played games with our lives. Yeah. And upper administration can do that. Yeah. So after you all this year teaching, did you ever think your teaching philosophy ever change? Well, no. Your teaching life. No. I teach I teach people how to make dream catchers now. Yeah. I teach people at the at the um, doll mm -hmm. museum. people come through on tours yeah. and I still hold myself to yeah. insistence persistence consistence <laughs> because I live my life that way yeah. and I've and mama mama always told me don't ask other people to do what you yourself won't do you know how I graded you know how I spent hours yeah. grading yeah. that's why I ended up retiring <laughs> because I couldn't grade anymore. Well, I just couldn't grade anymore. And My shoulders said, okay, is... were just shot. Yeah. My body told me when to quit. Yeah. But my mother always said, don't ask other people to do what you yourself won't do. And I never did because I would put myself on the line the same as them. My students and my colleagues. Yeah. But if somebody was given my colleagues trouble that they did not deserve, yeah. I would buffer that mm -hmm. as Dean. Mm -hmm. And I had more than one person walk in and say, you have to do something about this. No, I don't. This person's a good teacher. Yeah. This is a bad review. How many of those comments are good? Yeah. This is, we don't want, we want a hundred. And I'd go, you don't want a hundred percent. If you can please all the people all the time, you're not teaching. <laughs> wow. That's good to know because it always upset me when I see some big comments. <laughs> you cannot keep them all happy. My dad used to say you can't keep them all happy all of the time. And it's okay. And it's okay. okay. <laughs> and I just and he, and the person who told me that said, "Are you ticked off because you never had a hundred percent?" I said, "No, I consider myself a damn good teacher yeah. because I've not had a hundred percent." 100% means you're giving stuff away. If if you have every student in that classroom all the oh, time a. thinking you're doing beautifully uh -huh. and they're getting all A's, yeah. somebody's not doing a job. <laughs> because I don't think everybody's- It's possible, right? A uh, 4.0 in every subject. And it's okay. And it's okay. Because everybody has different talents. Yes. We all have different talents.
Wow. So, okay, so now for people out there, if they want to be a teacher, what's your advice? <laughs> Make damn sure you like kids. You have to love the people. If you don't have in your heart to love the kids yeah. and to look after them. Yeah. When I retired, mm -hmm. people kept saying, well, who's going to take your place? Who's going to take your place? Yeah. And I looked at the people in that room and I said, you all are going to take my place. We have students who are vulnerable. You need to pay attention to them. And I, if you're not ready to do that, yeah. you may, maybe need to think about what your profession is. Because teaching, to, to really teach, is mentoring and guiding. It's sharing. I, teaching is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. I learned from my students as much as they learned from me. You yeah. mentioned early on yeah. a board that I had. Yeah. And I found that after I screwed up a kid. I, I always believed that I could look at students and call their names and get them to do what they wanted. I wanted them to do. Yeah. And I, when I came to college, I had a young man who didn't want to learn. He was mad. He was very angry. Yeah. And one night I called on him and I said, now you can do this. You can do this. And I kept pushing and pushing. And he finally just got up. He says, I can't do this. And he walked out. And it wasn't too long after that, I read, I saw a passage that said, as a teacher, we have in our power, in our hands, yeah. to make or break a student. Yeah. We can either make their day successful, yeah. however we do that, yeah. or we can make it hell for them. Mm -hmm. And after that, I never backed a student in the corner. And I would always give them options, yeah. and I would always give them choices, yeah. and if they didn't know an answer, I'd say, think about it, we'll come back. And I moved into a different kind of still getting what I wanted, yeah, in different but in a different way, way. A, a much more, I, I guess maybe that's one of the places where I grew in patience. Mm -hmm. That's why you say we learn from students. <laughs> oh, we do. And not only in that way, you know, every term paper that somebody wrote oh about something I, I didn't know, know about, I know. oh my God, I learned piles and piles and piles. So as a student, as a teacher, we are so lucky. We read their papers that they work very hard. Yeah. And they tell us a story. They maybe didn't write for good, very good, but they told us stuff we yeah. didn't know. Yeah. Even more than that, the students that I did mentor and guide on a one-on-one -on -one in my office. A lot of people said I only did that with women. And, the, and when I first started in college, that was probably true because I was coming out of divorce and I was growing myself and healing myself as well. But by the time I ended teaching, I had men coming. Yeah, a single. <laughs> like Shingo. Yeah. <laughs> and we would sit and visit and talk. Yeah. And I had a, a teddy bear yeah. that you could hug. hug. And people would come and they'd cry, and I'd give them a box of Kleenexes, yeah. and we'd talk, and they'd cry, and they'd wipe their faces, and I'd say, okay, now, put on your hip boots and walk through the ship. <laughs> now we got work to do. Yeah. Because that's what I learned in my counseling from divorce. I literally, Fang Mei, dreamed yeah. about walking through shit. And I was shoveling, and I was shoveling, and I came out of that, and I thought, and that's what I'm doing, is walking through the shit. And that became my mantra, even with my students. And whenever they'd complain, I'd just look at them and say, put on your hip boots and walk through the shit. You gotta do this. And then I'd give them the teddy bear, they'd hug the teddy bear, we'd love each other, and they'd take the next step. So you need to give the name for this, your kitchen life. What's the, you write a book, you list the book. What's the title? When I taught the heroic journey in mythology, yeah. by that time I knew we were all walking yeah. a heroic journey. Yeah. And it's not just one. Yeah. We have little ones 
coming to college is a heroic journey. Getting married is a heroic journey. Getting divorced is a heroic journey. Losing a loved one is a heroic journey. Put them all together and you got the big one. Life is a heroic journey. And it's about the old Star Wars story. You get a call to adventure, whether it's going into high school, college, marriage, whatever. That's the call to adventure. You have mentors and guides. You have people who are willing to walk with you, but they can't do it for you. You have to do your own. You have uh, obstacles. Huh. I was probably an obstacle for some of my students. But some of those obstacles are good obstacles. Yeah. Some of those obstacles aren't. You have a dark forest. You know you gotta go through there. You don't know if you can make it or not. Some people don't. They go to war, they die. Some people do. They come back, they're damaged. They gotta heal. But the journey is always for a goal. In the fairy tales, it's the dragon. It, you rescue the princess. In, yeah. in whatever, down here is a goal. And the goal is always yeah. knowledge about yourself. It's always knowledge about yourself. That you can do more than you knew you could do before. Every journey. But that's not the end of the journey. Yeah. Because we have to bring what we learn to community and share. Because somebody else needs a mentor yeah. and guide. Yeah. So if a teacher's not prepared to be a mentor and guide, you're not ready. <laughs> you're not going to be the best. I won't say you're not ready, yeah. but you'll only be one part of the job. Yeah. Because we cannot give people what we don't have. No, yeah. we can't. We never been through struggle. We don't know how struggle feel like. That. If we've had no struggle, yeah, how can we help people struggle? We have to pretend. <laughs> and books don't teach us that. No. Life does. Yeah. Book give you the words. Yes. And you have to have experience to get the ins good yes. inside from there. Yes, wow. but but life. You know, when I was in high school, in college, I'd sit in college classes and I'd listen to my professors and I'd say, how in heaven's name do they know all of that? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get all of that from yeah. those books. Yeah. And by the time I was in my last 10, 20 years of teaching, yeah. I thought, I'm there. But I got that from life. Yeah. And, and unless we're willing to share that life journey, we're not teaching. That's true. Unless we're willing to be vulnerable yeah. and share that we're not perfect. Yeah. One of us are. We're not gods. Yeah. Unless we're willing to share those things with our students so that they know that it's okay to not be perfect. Yeah. Good. She's not perfect and she's the teacher. <laughs> but she can make it. Yeah. And she's trying to teach us how to make it. I, one of the things I learned in, com, in counseling was that perfection kills. And so when I had perfectionist students, I'd say, like, no, it's going to kill you or it's going to kill me. Because you are not perfect. And if your parents are expecting you to be perfect, yeah. you need to inform them because they're not either. I was a child of perfectionist parents. Yeah. <laughs> my father was a perfectionist farmer and my mother was a perfectionist and still is. Yeah. When I came to teaching college, yeah. I thought, can I do this? I know I can do it. Can I do it good enough? When I became dean, I thought, I know I can do it. Can I, can I do it good enough? Good enough? You just do the best you can do, and that's all you can do. And it may or may not be perfect. Oh, it, so it shouldn't not. be perfect. Yeah. We make mistakes, but we grow on those jobs, and we grow with the people. And that's why I put my arm around you Aww. and said, come to lunch with me. <laughs> you changed my life. <laughs> well, I hope 
hope I did. I hope I did for the good. Yeah. Uh, when I went on Facebook after I retired, I've never been on it before I retired. Yeah. Then when I went on Facebook, I was surprised yeah. at the number of students yeah. who contacted me on right. Facebook and wanted to be. They want to be your friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. And when you say, what would I name the book? Yeah. Think about it. My heroic journey. Because every one of us makes yeah. one. And it would, if I were to write a memoir, yeah, I think that's what I'd have to name it. Because while it was not somebody else's heroic journey, which was not a soldier's heroic journey or a person's heroic journey, yeah, it was mine. It's you. And I took a lot of people along with me. Yes. But what was us? Yes. A different part of our life. Yes. What I learned in counseling was we cannot change other people's lives. We can only walk with them. Shirley McLean mm -hmm. wrote, we'll know when we've grown ourselves to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. When we stop trying to make others be what we want them to be. And I have, that always has been important to me. Yeah. Once I told that child and backed him in the wall, yeah. no, I can't make you what I want you to be. Mm -hmm. I have to let you walk your path to get there. I can walk with you. Yeah. And you may choose to walk with me. Yeah. If you choose not to, that's fine. A lot of students chose not to. Yeah. They took the easier teachers. Yeah. But I had a lot of students who took me four or five classes because they knew they were going to learn and they were going to grow. Those are the lives I touched. Yes. And then that's their choice. That was their choice. They chose, they chose to, to grow. Yeah just to be by you. <laughs> yeah, tears and all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd say that if you didn't, if you hadn't, ha hadn't experienced the Bankhauser experience, yeah. you were in trouble. Because yeah. she was going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> I always said my students knew me the best of anyone. Yeah, because you shared. Because I shared. The story. Yes. Wow. I had fun. I, I, I loved teaching. From day one, I walked in and it was like walking back to a three master and walking onto the ship. Yeah. I knew I was home. Yeah. And I knew I was home every time I walked into work. I never had trouble going to work. I always tell students, welcome home. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I feel every day when I get in the classroom, that's my home and that's their home. That was exactly right. We have home together. That's right. In the, in the hour or two hours. Or and my students would walk into my office and they'd say, oh, wow, this is just like home. And I'd say, I spend half my life here. Yeah. It's going to be home. You have to be home. Welcome to my home. Yeah. And I often look at people and say, you're welcome in my life. Come along and walk with me. Yeah. If you don't like it, get out because I'm not changing anymore. You I did that trip back there. Somebody asked me, what would you like to go back? What point in your life yeah. would you like to go back? Never! I, every Just move step on. I've taken, yeah. I've had to learn things. I don't want to relearn them. <laughs> the chapter already done. I yes. just keep writing. I don't want to yes. go back and write a chapter. Yes. <laughs> wow. So thank you so much. You're more than welcome, thank me. You, you are very precious. Thank you today you share with us. Now it's still a lot to learn from you. you know, thank you. Bye bye for everybody listen to our interview. And what is